Good morning, chat. How is your Friday treating you? Are you looking forward to the weekend? Oh, it's finally in sight. It's finally in sight. Oh, the fucking week is done. No more bullshit with bosses and professors. It's free time. Time to do retarded shit. Time to do whatever you like. Get drunk. Get drunk and yell out your window at the neighbors. Make a scene. Make it memorable. Leave those leave those kids next door with a, a memory that'll last a lifetime of the crazy motherfucker that drank a bottle of bourbon and just started hucking pool balls <laughs> out at people. Who gives a shit? Just leave them with that impression. That's how you should start out a weekend. Really, really impactful. Well, we've got a we got a lot of stuff going on. A very fickle man. I jump around quite a bit. I had an idea of what I wanted to talk about today, and then I got distracted by other things. I'm like a cat. If you jingle something in front of my face, it's shiny. I get interested in it. I'm a bit interested in some of the politics that have been going on. Now, as you all know, it's the Democratic debate season. And oh boy, there's some fun shit going on. There's some fun shit going on in politics over the, uh, over the pond. In the wonderful land of uh, tea and crumpets. Oh, who doesn't love the land of tea and crumpets? The best politics over there. We'll talk about that later, though. I thought we could talk about just the Democratic debates. Just uh, touch base a little bit on some of those uh, amazing individuals. Now, I don't know if any of you watched it. I, I know that there were some issues trying to stream it. I don't know if CNN is doing what NBC does with the Olympics, where if you try to restream it anywhere, you're going to get hit with a copyright. I know a lot of people got purged off of Twitch, and a lot of people got purged off of YouTube. Uh, I'm pretty sure over here it was fine. Uh, DLive doesn't seem to really care too much. I know Nick Fuentes has done streams. I think Ralph has done some streams. I think even a few of the lefties, like Fosh and others, have come over to do streams about the elections. But trying to do it anywhere outside of DLive, anywhere outside of the protection of the Lemon Emperor, puts yourself at risk. So I watched the second night of debates. I missed the first one. I, I caught the highlights. But I watched the second night. Because Mama's Milkers was there. Oh, Tulsi. Oh, my girl, Tulsi. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care if I'm saying your name right. I will. Something about a woman that's rocking a Sindel haircut just gets my attention. When I look at politicians, I go for the one that looks most like a Mortal Kombat character. I don't know what that white streak is from. Maybe fucking white phosphorus rained down on her head when she was serving in the military. Who knows? But it's a very, it's a very Kino look, Tulsi. I like it. I like it a lot. Poor Tulsi. She gets no respect anytime this woman gets a little bit ahead. Like when she smacked around uh, Camilla Harris. We'll take a look at a, a clip of that in a minute. Anytime that she gets Google searched or there's a Twitter hashtag trending about her, somebody comes in and they just shove a boot up her ass. And right now, the Democrats, the lefties... They're sticking with the narrative that uh, she's a Russian plant. You can't trust her. That girl loves Vladimir. She's riding a Russian cock as we speak. Don't vote for her. You're going to let the Kremlin into the White House if you do. Now, their evidence for this is non-existent. It's non-existent like their entire Russian collusion narrative was with Trump and others. I don't know why the Democrats have become the new... Uh, age McCarthyism, but that seems to be the approach they're taking. I'm pretty sure if you were to go check, Keith Olbermann is still hiding under his desk doing a countdown clock to when Trump is going to get arrested for treason. You remember when he was doing that gimmick for like two years straight? Keith Olbermann would put out tweets of him under a desk with a, <laughs> with a little American flag and give retardedly long, grandiose speeches about how the Russians were coming. And the only one that could save America was MSNBC and Keith Olbermann. But as all these investigations have really not borne any fruit, you've got a few people that, uh, yeah, they, they had some business relationships and they're going to serve some prison time. But as far as a politician high up getting nailed, they don't really have anything. And I don't think it's really a shocking idea that foreign governments try to influence another government. Uh, why wouldn't they? If you were a foreign power, why wouldn't you try to bribe your way in? Why wouldn't you want to control them? Hell, it's it's a joke at this point, the amount of foreign governments that have influence over just the United States. But we can't talk about certain ones, because they're our allies. 
they're our, uh, they're our friendly friends. So we just implement laws to make it illegal to boycott their products. Oh, wait, I shouldn't say that. I don't know the relationship between the Lemon Emperor and Israel, so I probably shouldn't go into detail on that. But if it's the Russians, fuck them. Vladimir Putin, he lives in a cold Arctic tundra. Fuck him, we don't like him. Fuck him right up his ass. But they want to, they've, they've decided uh, Tulsi is the uh, the new, I guess she's the Russian, or she's the, she's the left version of Trump. She's the bought and paid for candidate. It's Russian bots, I tell you. Nobody's interested in her. Nobody cares about her. Now, that kind of, you know, doesn't really, doesn't really bear out when you go take a look at her uh, uh, Twitter account. And I'll show you this, and I'll even talk about the numbers, because I think, I think it's kind of important to show how retarded this narrative is when you're looking at uh, what's going on with her campaign. Now, uh, after the second debates, the second night of the second debates, information came out that uh, I believe Yang was not going to be able to make it to the next one, and Tulsi wasn't going to be able. They didn't meet the criteria to be able to get in, and the criteria was a threshold of unique donations, unique donators, and a few other, a few other uh, uh, measuring apparatus. But let's take a look at uh, what she's got going on on her Twitter account, talking about her unique donators. Pull that up. There we go. 128,403. We're so close with support growing since the Dem debate. Will you help us get to 130 unique donators? We need to qualify for the next do uh, next debate. Donate now. I see she studied under Bernie. She's She's learning the art as we speak. But I don't see any any reason that she's not going to hit 130. Um, if you go look and you just search on Google, because it'll give you the most relevant tweets quicker, or you could do a, a Twitter advanced search. I don't know how well it works in the new layout, but if you were to go look for her talking about donations, you'll see from April up until now, I mean, it, it, it's just been steadily growing. I think in April she had 40,000. Uh, by June she had about 80,000. And since the debates really started kicking off, she's... It's growing bigger and bigger. Each leap is larger and larger. Now, I, I mean, maybe that's 128,403 Russian bots. I couldn't tell you. I, I don't I don't know. Maybe Vladimir's been very busy. Maybe he's going to fund her all the way. But I got a feeling about Sindel. I don't know what it is. But I think she is uh, probably their best bet. You know, I was talking about her earlier, and people were, I guess, misinterpreting what I was saying. I'm not saying she's the best candidate, nor am I saying she's a good candidate. I'm saying she's probably the one with the best chance at electability. Politics isn't about truth. It's not even really about policies. It's about your ability to sell yourself and draw an interest. Politics at its heart is a popularity contest. If you don't have a great catchphrase or rock and body, <laughs> you're pretty much fucked. That's just the reality of it in our modern age. This isn't, you know, this isn't 100 years ago where there weren't uh, television cameras everywhere, where there wasn't radio everywhere. We couldn't see and hear you and understand that you were a freak of nature that should have been confined to a basement laboratory. Nowadays, you've got to go out there and smile and look pretty and look nice and be uh, affectatious and be the kind of person people want to sit down and chat with. Now, I'm looking at the candidates and I'm looking at who the Democrats are offering and do I want to go with Kamala? Kamala's kind of a bitch, isn't she? I mean, she doesn't really strike me as the type of person that I, I really want in a position of power. I mean, you can't put Joe Biden up there. The man's going to start sniffing little girls. And <laughs> they've got to wrangle him before every public appearance. I'm pretty sure the DNC pays people to go into the audience and push children back at least four or five rows so Joe's olfactory senses can't determine they're out there. Because if he smells one preteen girl, he's going to rush out in the crowd and start groping people. <laughs> then we got, we have de Blasio, mayor of New York City. Oh, we're, we'll talk about de Blasio in a bit and his uh, brilliant approach to running his fucking city. You've got Gillibrand, who, uh, I, I don't even want to spoil it. I'll, I'll play the clip for you, and it's basically a confirmation on why she will never be president. You've got Castro who I'm pretty sure is maybe the biggest fanboy of Obama that's ever existed in the history of ever. He's so desperate to be a black man who was once president named Barack. He has his mannerisms down, his speech patterns down. It's weird. 
it's really weird. It's like if politics was Comic Con, he'd be the fat guy in a fucking superhero outfit. But Castro, you're, you're not Obama. You're never going to be Obama. You've got Yang, whose solution to everything, any any question he's asked, how how are you going to fix this? What's your approach to this? I'm going to give you a thousand dollars. He actually said, I swear to God, when they were talking about criminality and how he would deal with it, his response was, maybe we should pay criminals so they don't commit crimes. Oh, yeah, that's that's great. I'm going to become a criminal then if Yang becomes president because I'm making double double my uh, tugboat under him. I'm getting that thousand dollars of free, easy money and another thousand dollars so I'm not out there raping and pillaging. You know, I, I've always had an issue with Yang. I know uh, some people liked him. Uh, but after hearing him give speeches and talk about his thoughts on why he wants to implement the $1,000 policy, <laughs> it's basically a bribe. He's actually said more or less this, and you can go look up the clips. I'm sure they're still circulating out there. That white people are fucking dangerous. And if Asians aren't careful, white people are going to holocaust them like they did the Jews. <laughs> so the best strategy is to pay them a thousand bucks so they get lazy and stupid and can be outbred until they're weak enough they can't holocaust us. That, that is, I swear to God, something Yang has talked about. So I don't know if I want to put a guy in power who's talking about uh, making me complacent, stupid, and lazy <laughs> so, so I can't commit some uh, potential future crime against his race. Elizabeth Warren, do we even need, do we even need to talk about Elizabeth Warren? It's just there's not a really great uh, stable of candidates. You've got Cory Booker, who you know <laughs> occasionally throws out some funny shit. Uh, you know he, he was talking about shithole countries with immigrants, which I thought I'm amazed nobody brought that up. I know he was quoting something else, but still the fact that he's up there talking about uh, immigrants from shithole countries. You'd think somebody would have leaped on that. I remember the Republican uh, primary season, the debate season, you know, leading up until the election. Those guys, that was a fucking brawl. Hey, they, they looked for anything and everything they could go after each other for. You know, they made shit up just for the fun of it. You know, fucking Ted Cruz, the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> it's, it's absurd, but it stuck. Jeb Bush and his please clap and pocket turtles. He never got over that. And let's not forget Marco Rubio and his gay foam parties. Oh, Marco Rubio, the robot, having his gay foam parties in college. Man, that was fun. And that's what I like about this season. It starts off a little slow. It's always a little bit of a slow burn in the beginning. But then people start to hate each other. And then they start to personally attack each other. And it's around that point that it gets really fun. It gets, re it gets really interesting. Now, I know I've only listed, I'd say, maybe half of the uh, potential candidates for president for the, the Democrats. But that's because the other half are so fucking just unremarkable. They're not memorable. They're not people that really stick out and you go, oh, wow, oh, well, I'm going to talk about Jay Inslee? Is that even his, Is that even the proper name? I, it's Inslee. I know it's his last name. He's a Butch Anderson Cooper. It's like if Anderson Cooper took a bunch of creatine and hit the gym before coming to work. That's who Inslee reminds me of. But he does say some retarded shit. And this second Democratic debate had some moments where it was a bunch of white people, a bunch of white people, namely Inslee, de Blasio, and Gillibrand, trying to convince people that they understood how terrible white people were. What? It's like they learned nothing from the 2016 election. They learned nothing from dealing with Trump. You know, Hillary's message when she was running didn't resonate with middle America or white America or working America. It was directed towards urban areas, towards diverse multicultural city demographics. She completely forsook that uh, large portion of the population, white people, <laughs> that, you know, occasionally vote for Democrats. And it cost her big. You know, she went out there and she did essentially what Mitt Romney did by casting off half the country. Oh, a uh, basket of deplorables is about the same as Romney talking about 47% don't fucking matter. I mean, that both both those candidates suffered a cost for saying shit like that. And Hillary, 
Hillary just didn't learn. Now you would think any candidate, after watching the debacle that was 2016, would be like, holy shit, whatever we do, let's not do what she did. But no, these motherfuckers all in. They're putting their dick on the table, all in. Fuck it. Let's high roll this motherfucker. So Gillibrand, Inslee, and de Blasio, I mean, it, it, it's ridiculous getting up there talking about their white guilt. It's about as funny as watching Cory Booker try to speak Spanish. Don't do that, Cory. You sound retarded. I, I don't even speak Spanish that well, and I wouldn't attempt it. You sound like a fucking retard up there. If you're trying to capture Latino votes, Spanish speakers, don't try to speak the language. It just comes off retarded. You're not JFK. <laughs> you're not talking about being uh, a Berliner. All right, it doesn't have the same impact. So I, I let's take a look at some of the highlights, and let's take a look at what Gillibrand said, because this is why this woman will never hold a political office higher than the cleaning lady at the Senate. I'm sorry, I went off on a little bit of a rant there. I do like politics. I don't talk about it a lot, but I do like it. Uh, just because I like watching people try to personally destroy one another, because it's always entertaining. Uh, so let me let me cue it up. I have it in here somewhere. I've got another thing queued up too uh, for today. I hope you guys like laughing at. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it. Oh, let's see. That's De Blasio. We'll get to that one in a minute. You know what? Fuck it. We're we're going to just start it out. I think as a white woman. Of oh, okay. We're just going to start it out with uh, <laughs> with uh, the white privilege talk. Why not? Let's listen to what a retarded white woman had to say when speaking I think to minorities. As a white woman of privilege. Oh boy, you can already tell where this is going to go. When I heard this, I was like, "Oh, please don't do this. This is this is the end of your career if you make this speech." But no, no, of course, soccer mom here has to make this speech. Oh, everything about this. This is such a Karen fucking thing to say. All right. Uh, here we go. Hopefully the volume is good enough for you guys. I think as a white woman of privilege who is a U.S. senator running for president of the United States, it is also my responsibility to lift over those voices that aren't being listened to. And I can talk to those white women in the suburbs that voted for Trump and explain to them what white privilege actually is. That when their son is walking down a street with a bag of M&Ms in his pocket, wearing a hoodie, his whiteness is what protects him from not being shot. When, when his... You know, just can I just throw this out? I don't want to be nitpicky here, uh, Gillibrand, Miss Soccer Mom. But how is he protected by his whiteness at night if he's wearing a hoodie that's pulled up over his head? How is an officer driving from behind going to know he's white if his skin is covered up and you can't see his fucking head? You're a retard. <laughs> I know what this is in reference to. We're talking about Trayvon. Trey Trey. Big boy Trayvon Martin who got gunned down by a happy little Mexican. <laughs> and, uh, she, oh, got to do a call back to that. Those minorities like it when I bring up the names of dead kids. Let's bring up Trayvon. Oh, yeah, Karen, tell us more about white privilege. That's what resonates with middle America. When their child has a car that breaks down and he knocks on someone's door for help and the door opens and the help is given, it's his whiteness that protects him from being shot. That is what white privilege in America is today. And so my responsibility is to not only lift up those stories, but explain to communities across America, like I did in Youngstown, Ohio, to a young mother, that this is all of our responsibilities and that together we can make our community stronger. Oh, I just want to, you know, go out there and tell white people that they're white. <laughs> oh, that's great. Great plank for your platform, Gillibrand. I'm sure that's going to really, it's really going to knock it out of the park. I'm going to go remind white people that they're white in case they forgot. <laughs> in case they haven't looked in a mirror lately. Hey, hey, I'm presidential candidate Gillibrand. Are you aware that you're Caucasian? Maybe that slipped your notice. But I'm here to tell you, yeah, you are white. <laughs> oh, God. She's the type, isn't she? You know who she reminds me of? And this is why I, I'm putting political bias aside. I'm giving you just a read on her as a person. This is who Gillibrand reminds me of. Everybody who grew up had a friend with a parent like this. The bitch mom. Gillibrand reminds me of the bitch mom. Gillibrand reminds me of the type of mother who would let her kid have a sleepover, and then all the kids show up, and then she sets rules. 
Oh, I, everybody, let's have fun, but let's do it responsibly, okay? No going into the kitchen after 10. Got to keep the volume low. I know it's the weekend, but we need to sleep, okay? That's She's that person. She's probably that bitchy drunk mom, too. The one that the kid gets embarrassed about when his friends come over and she's half passed out on the couch with a box of wine sitting at her feet. That's, that's who she reminds me of as a person. I just, I don't like her. And when she started going into the white privilege talk, I really started not liking her. <laughs> that's the last person I wanted to vote for. So she's dead in the water. I mean, stick a fork in it. This bitch is, her. it's over. There's, I, I guarantee you she's not going any farther than she is. Not that she really had a chance to in the first place, but just that it's not going to happen. I think I had, oh yeah, here we go. And to make sure it's a country. I did have one that had some highlights. So this kind of, you know, instead of sitting here and making you watch three fucking hours of Democrats talking to one another, uh, how about three minutes? It kind of hits the highlights and we can take a look. And at to make that. sure it's a country that puts working people first. Thank you, Mayor de Blasio. Senator Michael Bennett. Calling it a disgusting, rat-infested, rodent mess. Oh, my God. How could you do that? Aren't you listening to Corey? But how could Donald Trump say Baltimore isn't the most beautiful city in the world? Oh, Baltimore. I want to sleep on the streets of Baltimore. Hey, let's uh, eh, let's go take a <laughs> let's go take a look at uh, what's going on in Baltimore lately. I think I think Donald Trump had a tweet this morning about Baltimore. Uh, let's uh, let's go see let's go see what uh, news from the uh, utopia known as Baltimore is coming out today. Oh, really bad news! The Baltimore house of Eli Cummings was robbed. Too bad. <laughs> what a cunt! I love it. Oh, God, it's, I, I almost believe the conspiracy theory. There was this wild story going around that Baron Trump was a time traveler. <laughs> There's some book in the past he wrote about himself. And then he's feeding his father all this information so he does well in politics. And sometimes you, you look at something like this and you think, this lucky son of a bitch talks all this shit about Baltimore and Cummings. And then Cummings' house gets robbed after he talks about how great Baltimore is. Oh, it's a stand-up city. It's not a desolated wasteland of uh, misused human potential and broken dreams. There's not rat shit on every street corner. Baltimore is just great. Fast forward two days, I got robbed. <laughs> my name is Representative Cummings, and some motherfucker broke into my house. Oh, too bad. Oh, so sad. Too bad. Oh, my God. Yeah, hey, listen to Cory Booker talk about how great Baltimore is. Donald Trump's such a cunt. Baltimore's wonderful. Nobody, nothing bad happens there. Nobody ever suffers in Baltimore, except for the guy representing the fucking district whose house gets broken into. We need a nation that understands that these tired old language, the... Yeah, this kept happening, too. This happened once for uh, Booker and I think twice for de Blasio. Uh, and even once for uh, Joe Biden. People just started chanting, just interrupting them. You can't really hear them because the mics aren't picking it up. <laughs> but they, they all kind of cucked out. They all kind of did a Bernie Sanders. You remember when Sanders was giving a speech and the Black Lives Matters uh, protesters showed up, the two fat bitches? And they basically kicked this little Jewish ass off the stage and then did their... Beyonce gif head shaking shit for about 20 minutes. That's kind of how they reacted. You know, Booker, de Blasio, Biden all just kind of sat there and took it. We cannot keep with the Republican talking points on this. You gotta stop. The reality is that what under my Medicare for all plan, yes. You know, Michael Bennett kind of reminds me of a mix of Gomer Pyle and <laughs> and um, oh my god, uh, Run Forrest, uh, Forrest Gump. He reminds me of a mix of Gomer Pyle and Forrest Gump. I don't, he's, I, I almost wonder if he's like touched in the head a little bit. You know what I mean? If he's that kind of special. It's just, he seems lost on stage. Like he just, he's, he's I can't explain it. But every time this man talks, I keep expecting a handler to come out and tard wrangle him into a retard helmet. 
employers are not going to be able to dictate the kind of health care that their employees get. They will be able to make that decision. Please be respectful. Please be respectful in the crowd. Please continue, Mr. Vice President. When Vice President Biden was in the United States Senate working with segregationists to oppose busing, which was the vehicle by which we would integrate America's public schools, had I been in the United States Senate at that time, I would have been completely on the other side of the aisle. And let's be clear about this. Had those segregationists their way, I would not be a member of the United States Senate. Mr. Vice President, you can't. So Kamala basically just won Joe Biden a bunch of votes. <laughs> if Joe Biden had his way, I wouldn't even be standing here today. I, I don't know if that's, is that a sales pitch? Is she trying to get him elected? <laughs> if Joe Biden had his way, I'd be on a ship right now to a cotton field. You can't vote for Joe Biden. He hates people. You can't have it both ways. You invoke President Obama more than anybody in this campaign. You can't do it when it's convenient right. and then dodge it when it's not. And the second thing, and this really irks me because I, I heard the vice president say that, if you've got a PhD, you can come right into this country. Well, that's playing into what the Republicans want, to pit some immigrants against other immigrants. Some are from countries and some are from worthy countries. He knew what he was. I love the fact that Booker, I just, <laughs> some immigrants are from shithole countries. Cory Booker, vote for me. Vote for me and Joe Biden. I don't like those shithole immigrants. He doesn't like the black people. We're, we're making the Democrats great again. A little Southern prize. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta you vote for the Dixie party. He was doing that he was killing Eric Garner and yet he has not been brought to justice. That police officer should be off the street. I wanna bring the conversation back to the broken criminal justice system. Oh, I think this is the moment where Tulsi activated her Sindel powers and performed a fatality on Kamala. She bent her over on stage. By the way, doesn't Tulsi remind you of Olivia Munn? If anybody watched Attack of the Show back when G4 Tech TV was still a thing, she reminds me of like a like Olivia Munn 10 years later. It's really weird, but that's who she is kind of just appears to be to me. That is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. The first thing that I'm gonna do. Oh, uh, you know, by the way, and they didn't put this in the highlight reel. If anybody can find this and clip it, it's right around the time that, uh, it's a little after Cory Booker talked about uh, shithole immigrants. He actually said one of his uh, policies, one of his uh, planks in his platform going forward, and I swear to God he used this as a phrase, was marijuana justice. <laughs> marijuana justice. Corey wants us to get high. Corey wants us to token pass. But once he brought that up, everybody started talking about pot. When I'm president is I'm going to Clorox the Oval Office. The second thing I'm going to do is I will re-engage on global climate change. And what's gonna happen in the fall of next year of 2020, if they don't impeach him, is he's gonna say, you see, you see, the Democrats didn't go after me on impeachment, and you know why? Because I didn't do anything wrong. These folks that always investigate me, they're always trying to go after me. When it came down to it, they didn't go after me there because I didn't do anything wrong. Conversely, if Mitch McConnell is the one that lets him off the hook, we're going to be able to say, Secretary, well, sure, they impeached Secretary him in the House, Castro, but his friend Mitch you. McConnell, Moscow thank Mitch, you, let him off the hook. Oh, got to get that hashtag in there. Those kids love it. They love those Twitter sayings, Moscow Mitch, hashtag. Oh, Castro, you're never going to be Obama. I'm sorry, you're not black enough. <laughs> Why are you picking on Gomer Pyle? He didn't do nothing to you. That man's slow in the head. You're, you're beating a retard. I don't know if that's really an accomplishment in the political arena. I don't know if you should be really proud of that and lauding it out. Uh, I mean, that, that essentially covers the majority of the highlights. If you'll notice, I mean, this was put together by Time Magazine. Uh, did you notice who wasn't in there? Everybody got shown, even if they didn't really speak, with the exception of Jay Inslee, who was trying to convince people he didn't know what it was like to grow up as a black teenager. Shocker, you're not black, Inslee. We know you didn't grow up as a black teenager. But Yang, Yang was nowhere in there. 
And he had some funny shit to say. Uh, when they were talking about climate change and they went over to Yang and they wanted to get his opinion on it, he essentially told people, uh, it's too late now. The earth is completely fucked. It's way too hot. We need to move to higher ground. I want to pay people a thousand dollars a month to move them on to the mountaintops. I, oh, how could you not put that in a highlight reel? If, if Yang is so, um, I, I, I don't know how to describe it, but if he's not making enough of an impact to get something that funny put onto a highlight reel, he's, he's really in trouble. Like Tulsi's pulling it out of the bag by getting the individual donators to meet the criteria. I don't know what Yang's going to do. This, this might be the end of him. You know, I don't, I don't think uh, Gomer Pyle there is going to do well. I don't think Inslee's going to make it far. I, you know, I, I suspect Booker, uh, Harris, uh, Tulsi, Biden, uh, the, they're going to have no problems. I think Gillibrand will probably be gone in the next month or so. Like, there are certain people that are just going to drop off. Now, de Blasio, de Blasio's a cunt. And de Blasio's always been a cunt. Uh, but running for president just brings it to people's attention more that he's a giant fucking walking cunt. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, just his policies in New York, as well as well as some of the shit he does to try to run for president that just makes people hate him more. Uh, okay, let's see. You know, I, I'm trying to find the one. You know, I, I guess this is probably the best one to start with. Uh, now, de Blasio is mayor of New York City, obviously. Uh, he has put in place people in his administration or allowed people to take positions that have implemented terrible policies when it comes to education. And this motherfucker, Richard Carranza, is probably the biggest piece of shit you're ever going to run into. This guy comes in from out of state to take over the position uh, head of education, or whatever the fuck they call it, whatever his posting is specifically titled, fires a bunch of people who were tenured, and then uh, says he wants to hire only black people, women, and minorities to replace them. Then he implements... Uh, all these new diversity programs for the educational system, and he he calls anybody who has a problem with it racist, kind of like the governor of Minnesota did when he went up north to Duluth and other areas to talk to people about immigration from uh, by Somalians into the state. When people brought up they were uncomfortable with that because so many of the immigrants that were moving there were bringing things like uh, TB and other diseases because they didn't want to get immunized, he called them racist and said, get the fuck out of the state. If you have a problem with us bringing in unvaccinated immigrants and putting your kids at risk you leave you're a racist you're a bigot and richard here uh, our little dick kind of the same thing kind of the, the exact same thing actually if you have a problem with his diversity programs you're a racist and you need to go uh stocks nothing but minorities puts people in a place that don't know what they're doing implements programs that are just retarded attacks charter schools does a lot of really weird shit and de Blasio co-signs it. Now, if you look this guy's name up, you can go read the related articles. You'll find that he's not very well liked. A lot of people fucking hate him. But, uh, you know, de Blasio doesn't care because he thinks being white is the worst thing ever. And de Blasio wants uh, everybody to look at him like, I'm not really a white guy. I'm one of you. I'm one of the minority. Wink, wink. Get it? <laughs> Where's... Uh, I, and I want to see if I can find this here. I went off on a... Oh, here we go. Just, again, to give you an idea of uh, of what de Blasio is like when it comes to interacting with just normal, everyday people and why he's unlikable and a cunt, uh, here's a story from today. De Blasio makes flyers wait on tarmac so he can rush to the view. This happened yesterday. He had his entire staff delay a goddamn plane, make people wait on the tarmac for like 10 to 20 minutes so he could deplane first because he needed to make it to the television studio to shoot The View. There was no government emergency. There was no security protocol. There was no uh, threat or danger. He just had his staffers fuck with people on a plane so he could go on TV. This is the sort of man that wants to be president, and yet the constituents and the people that would potentially be voting for him, he doesn't give a fuck about them. You sit on the plane. I'm de Blasio. This is also a guy... The bitches about uh, uh, the environment, bitches about frivolous spending, and yet takes a private train's worth of SUVs to drive up the block to get lunch. Fatty won't take public transport. He won't uh, 
<laughs> he won't go for a walk. He'll use a fleet of SUVs to drive him a block and a half to get a bite to eat. At the same time, telling you you're a terrible person for not uh, going green. Again, he's the sort of guy that's just unlikable. Who puts in a position other unlikable people. So I do not see him going far. <laughs> Fucking de Blasio, what a cunt. Ugh, there's so many of them that are unlikable. But, you know, half the fun is not just knowing they're unlikable, it's waiting for their opponents they're running against to clue into the fact that they're unlikable. <laughs> oh. Now, uh, a few other political notes. Uh, Boris Johnson, of course, over, over the pond, down to a majority of one, as in one person is giving him the majority. Conservatives are turning on him. Betrayal at every corner. I don't know if Brexit's looking good right now. But, you know, the UK has its uh, its political parties that are dedicated to the cause. Now, there's the Brexit party uh, that's headed by Nar uh, Nigel Farage, and uh, that's been doing great, winning a lot of elections. And there's the another party, too. You may have heard of it. The United Kingdom Independence Party. Well, UKIP in the news again. Now, they've got an election, a leadership election, that's coming up actually fairly shortly, so that's going to be fun to see who wins. Uh, but they did not do well. At the last local elections, lost, I think, 80... Was it 80% of their seats? And then with the MEP elections, uh, didn't win any. I think they lost. They have nothing. <laughs> they have nothing. Even their leader at the time, Jared Batten, doesn't have a political position in the uh, EU Congress. But there was a, a by-election that was held recently and it was a chance for UKIP maybe to get something I mean my god we can we can at least win Brecken <laughs> we can at least win Brecken Sargon help us use your use your YouTube views to save us Sargon uh oh what's going on here oh okay there we go <laughs> you're gonna love this oh uh, so uh they have a, a by-election okay and UKIP's running they're running against the typical parties that you would expect them to run against. Lib Dems, Conservatives, Tories, whatever. All the fucking British parties, nobody cares. So how did they How did they do? You know what? I'm not even going to show you just yet. Chat, you tell me. How do you think they did? How do you think that by-election turned out for you, Kip? Now remember, they've got Sargon's brilliant leadership <laughs> to help them out with this. I'm just going to give Chad a second. Uh, you tell me. Do you think they uh, knocked it out of the ballpark? Did... Uh, the UKIP party come out number one. If they came out number one, give me a one. If you think it turned into a disaster, give me a two. I'm seeing a lot of zeros and Fs. Oh, oh, that's not good. I'm starting to suspect you people might have read the news. All right, well, let's let's take a look and see how did it turn out. Uh, well, you're right if you said they did terribly. You're right if they if you said that they lost. But I don't think you understand how badly they lost. As far as embarrassment goes, I don't think you can top a headline like this. You get beaten by monster raving loony party and <laughs> breaking by election. So you get an established political party with millions of dollars was beaten by Yosemite Sam and a fat woman in a pink dress under the party name Monster Raving Looney Party. <laughs> Holy shit! You could face an embarrassing political defeat in the Brecken by-election after their candidate received fewer votes than the Monster Raving Looney Party. Candidate Lady Lily Pink claimed 334 votes, beating UKIP's Liz Phillips, who received only 242 votes. The Monster Raving Looney Party's manifesto states they'll send Noel Edmonds to negotiate Brexit because he understands deal or no deal. It adds, there will be no need for backstop for the Brexit negotiation. We'll have Alex Stewart as wicket keeper. <laughs> they don't even, this is a joke party. I, 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 maybe, you know, I just want to be clear on that. These people are fucking around and they beat UKIP. <laughs> they ran as a joke, and they actually beat UKIP. They're just having a giggle, having a bit. Of, this is the woman that beat UKIP. <laughs> Drink it in. 
Look at you, Samity Sam, over here having a bit of a stroke. <laughs> this is fucking amazing to me. How do, how do you lose this badly? Oh, holy shit. Oh, that, that is, that is rough. I don't know if you can come back from that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a confused British cowboy with his enormous buttons. Oh, my God. Victorious, uh, yeah, liberal Democrats. So, yeah, yeah, obviously, uh, other people took the took the lead. <laughs> but this is the face. This is the face of people. Oh, let's view photos. Can we get a better picture? There we go. Oh, like, can we get the first one? Yes. Yes. There we go. Let me get it. If I do, oh, it's going to make it go away. All right. <laughs> there we go. I want that full. There we go. There you go. These people are, <laughs> these people are politically more savvy than Jared Batten, Paul Joseph Watson, Sargon of Akkad, and all the other members of UKIP. <laughs> these two motherfuckers ran a better election than UKIP can. Oh, I love politics. Good God. I don't know. Just running for a joke and they won. Well, they didn't win. Let me be clear. They didn't actually win as compared to the real parties. But they won if you were to compare them simply to UKIP. Oh, the only thing that would make this better is if she now defects and joins the Brexit party. <laughs> she, she declares herself a Brexiteer. It's like, yeah, we, we won. We placed higher than them. We weren't really expecting it. I think we'll all join the Brexit party. Nigel Farage seems to know what he's doing. It's a smart cookie, that guy. Oh, my God. I'm excited. I don't know. Maybe you guys aren't, but I'm excited to find out how those leadership elections are going to turn out. I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens with the party. I have a, was it Mike Hokum? I don't know if he's still running. I think Jared's been banned from running for leadership of UKIP by the NEC. Uh, another guy dropped out because some tape dropped of him making uh, quote unquote sexist remarks. So I, you know, if Hokum gets in, I think there's going to be some people getting thrown out of the party. And Jared can't get back in. At least that's my understanding of it at the moment. I'm not sure which way it's going to go, but it's that party is just, it's over. UKIP is dead. <laughs> They're trying to remodel themselves as the free speech anti-immigration party. I, I don't know. I mean, you're humiliated nationally. You've lost all your, your political clout, all your seats. You were baiting... You were beaten by a party again. Let me quote. Let me quote the name. Oh, come on here. Let me quote their name exactly. The monster raving loony party beat you in an election. Everybody's defected. <laughs> Police were investigating uh, Carl uh, for all the goofy shit he does. Uh, Tommy Robinson, who was an advisor, you wouldn't even let him in the party. He was advising you. Uh, oh, probably going to be hard to advise you from inside a prison cell that he's currently sitting in. I'm <laughs> like, what are you going to do, you kip? Where's your future from here? Just disband. It's it's over. <laughs> You're fucking dead in the water. If these people can beat you, you, you just pack it up. It, it's time to call, uh, what is that uh, in football, the slaughter rule? We're, we're at that point. Somebody needs to get the ref to blow the whistle. The slaughter rule is in play. We just can't continue. It's too cruel. This is too cruel to let this continue onward. So that was the... That was a political segment. I, I just wanted to talk about the Dems a little bit, give you my thoughts on uh, how the candidates are faring so far, um, and then talk about UKIP's amazing showing in the by-election, and remind you that that leadership election is coming up. So we'll get to see who takes the reins of power. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Now, um, <laughs> I have no I have no good segue for this, so let's fuck segues. Who needs segues? Um... Let me find the proper video to start this. <laughs> start this off. Oh my god, I, I bookmarked so many of them. I, I I went a little overboard. Uh, so there's a there's a, a protest video going around that took place at a Walmart, and it reminded me of how crazy animal rights activists are and just goofy dumb shit that they do, uh, which sent me on a little journey of just watching the stupid shit that they do. Uh, and so I thought we could we could journey down that road. Because if you want to talk about insane people, I mean, you could you could look at a lot of different groups, especially protest groups. If you want to see goofy shit, Black Lives Matters, 
always delivers on that front. But they kind of pale in comparison to just the dumb fuckery that vegans get up to and that animal rights activists get up to when they want to make a point about the poor little puppers. <laughs> well, in their case, they wouldn't be puppers. I think PETA hates dogs. Uh, the poor little chickens and turtles and cows and pigs. Uh, and so... <laughs> so let's take a look at the protest video. Very brave people, freedom fighters out there uh, working to make the world a better place, really. Uh, out there fighting the good fight at their local... Uh, at their local Walmart to remind people that, uh, you know, milk, milk is uh, a product of uh, cow rape. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, here we go. Always a good start when you've got uh, hysterical women in cow, uh, cow masks uh, coming out and sobbing. <laughs> Can you imagine? You're just there. You're, you're like, my kids need cereal and some milk. They're hungry for breakfast. And you've got these spastic liberal hippie fucks <laughs> doing some avant-garde play in the milk section, talking about cow rape. There we go. See, if you're against if you're against kidnapping and rape, ditch dairy. <laughs> what are you what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, I don't know if you're aware of how milk is made, but it involves an awful lot of rape and a lot of kidnapping. Every time you have a delicious delicious bowl of ice cream, just understand that part of that product came from a raped cow. <laughs> And that sign, that sign, stop eating babies. And I think this bitch is holding up a fucking flat screen television. <laughs> She's got a backpack with a DVD player and a battery attached. Also, I don't know if you noticed, a few of these cows are awfully short. Uh, they always involve their children for some reason. Because mom and dad can't just be crazy on their own. It's got to be a family activity. And what better way to make sure your child's a lone outcast than to drag them to the local Walmart, make them, make them wear a cow mask, and then start screaming about raping babies. <laughs> hey, hey, Timmy, how come none of your friends want to come to your birthday party? Well, mom... Maybe it's because you dressed me like a cow and st kept screaming about rape at Walmart. <laughs> Don't do it. Do not do it. <laughs> huh? Right. Look at this lady. Excuse me, I need to get some milk. Excuse me. Oh, you know, uh, this leads me into something I'll talk about later on, because there, there are a few of these videos, but, um, well, two things, really. One, why aren't people, okay, why don't people find out where they're going to go protest and then slip in and pretend to be a protester and just say outrageous shit to see how uncomfortable they get? Because they can't really call you, like, if you're just some guy walking around in a cow mask, <laughs> just is there talking about milk and stuff and if you just also raised your fist up and said and by the way lynch all the blacks <laughs> just to see how Peter would react to that situation everybody's looking at them how could he say that how could P why is Peter advocating for slavery 
I thought they were here talking about cows. Also, I, I, I looked and looked and looked. Why don't more people fuck with them? Like, there's one video we'll watch in a little bit, which is actually amazing. And somebody went, like, beyond uh, the whole nine yards, really, to fuck with these people. Oh, oh. PETA is so disrespected that even even suburbanite soccer moms don't just like to fuck with them for the fun of it. Oh, you know, I in fact, I want to show you an example. This is the kind of video, like, you know, I'm just going to show it to you. This is the kind of video I, I wish more people made. Let me, let me, let me make sure I can find it. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a very specific video. Okay, here we go. Uh, it's, again, unique. It's about the only one of its type that I found. Uh, but this is fucking amazing to me. Uh, so there's a group of activists, the backstory to this, apparently. There's a group of activists at a slaughterhouse that always blockade the trucks and they do protests all the time and they fuck with the drivers and they fuck with the employees so a group of people decided to have a little bit of fun with them and join their protests in solidarity on you how about you put some guilt in your stew oh me oh my what a wonderful day to kill some innocent chickens but let's bring out my prize possession well Look at the pretty little thighs on you. You are finger licking good. Get over here, you. Where are you going? Yum, 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 yum. Uh, what? Stop! Why? I am the chicken of truth. Don't you see now I am a person? You do look familiar. You look like a beautiful little egg layer. Oh, no. Get over here. Oh, I fucking love that Colonel Sanders fist fucks a chicken and eats his egg at a PETA protest. This is the most amazing shit, and they, they don't even get they don't even get fucked up. Like the protesters try to block him and shit, and they just continue on. It's the most amazing shit I've ever seen. <laughs> Meat eater, meat eater, shame on you. How about you put some guilt in your stew? Now, chicken, it's time to take your life. Oh, no. Not so fast. What in tarnation? Emma, Emma Watson. Watson. That's right. I came all the way from the UN and I heard your cry, chicken. Thank you. Now, what makes you the expert on this, Emma Watson? I learned a thing or two. From my movie stand Beauty the and the Beast. Can you stand in front of them, please? Well, which is also available on Blu ray and DVD. Well, say no more, Emma Watson. But now we must duel for this chicken's life. Ha! 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 Chicken Lavu! Ah! You hit me right in my weak spot. My ignorance. Well, it looks as though the real magic was the facts. That's right. Well, I'm back to my KFC chain of restaurants chickens were just slaughtered to dream of the days of racism and slavery. And <laughs> I fucking love this video. Oh, I wish more people fucked with these protesters. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why this one group of uh, actors who love the theater so well, these thespians, decided to show up and just fuck with them. But they stuck on script the whole time. Pulling, pulling eggs out of each other's asses and eating them. Emma Watson coming in to give a speech about the barbarity of eating chickens. Ah, oh, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> oh, there's another one too. Uh, fantastic. Let me see if we can find this one. It's, uh, oh, yeah, we'll watch this one first, but there's another one where they end up going, <laughs> they end up going to like a, 
a fucking McDonald or not a McDonald. They end up going to a slaughterhouse and like lashing themselves onto the uh, the processor, whatever you'd call it, to prevent you know like oh you can't kill these chickens. And then some Mexican dude in the back turns it on, <laughs> so they're all attached to the kill machine. And some Mexican dude turns it on, and they start going through. I'm sure the fucking janitor really appreciates it. I'm sure the poor fucking guy making five bucks an hour likes it when the pampered rich white suburbanites show up at the fucking McDonald's and just douse the place in fake looking blood and shit. I'm sure they, they're just thrilled about that. Oh boy, my shift's going to be an extra 20 minutes today because a bunch of pampered rich uh, princess syndrome white girls decided to show up because they've, uh, they've got an issue with me eating a fucking hamburger. Bodies, not ours. Listen, <laughs> you fucking retard. You're, humans are the apex predator here. All right, we're omnivores. Sure, there's shit that can fuck us up. But our big monkey brains put us at top of the food chain. Oh, I know. I know. Oh, my God, the poor animals. You know, when society crashes down, when there's a real shit hits the fan scenario, and these LARPing fucks from Seattle and Portland and areas like that don't have that support network to get their all organic tomatoes for you know fifty dollars a piece well they don't have the luxury of being wealthy enough <clears throat> to uh, to feed themselves with nothing but the greens and they're left on their own they're gonna be I give them a week before they're out in the woods beating squirrels to death against rocks for a little bit of meat this whole veganism shit is a pampered first world thing the moment the moment the shit hits a fan and they find themselves in a real scenario where they have to fend for themselves, they are going to murder the fuck out of anything and everything they can get their little hippie hands on. <laughs> They're going to be out there eating fucking chipmunks, eating skunks, eating uh, fucking platypus, doesn't matter, fuck it if it's poisonous, I'll just clip the fucking claws off. Their body's not ours. Oh, I, you know, sometimes I wonder what third worlders, people in Africa or in shithole South American uh, countries, or just in really destitute uh, Southeast Asian countries who don't get enough food are fucking North Koreans. <laughs> what they think of this pampered shit when they're looking at these dumb white college age fucks whine about hamburgers as they're starving and <laughs> they only get half a bowl of fucking rice. Pigs, unable to move in metal crates on cold floors. Fish fall to each other with no space and plenty of disease. Fish who did swim free fall to the hook from the sea. Lambs taken screaming from their brothers and sisters before their throats are slit. Every single word sentenced to death so places like this can exist. So monetary value can be ascribed to their vulnerable little bodies. Animal bodies are objectified every day. I wonder what their position on cannibalism is. Has anybody ever asked a vegan what their position on cannibalism is? Like, are they cool with that? <laughs> Would they eat a meat eater if they were offered the opportunity? Like, if we started making Soylent Green, would they have uh, uh, a come option? Would they, would they be uh, upset about that? Is it just the poor little innocent animals? <laughs> if a study comes out tomorrow and it says plants feel pain, uh, are they going to starve to death? Or where are they going to draw the line? 
I, I want a study to come out that says, yeah, you know, a plants totally feel. Every time you rip a daisy out, it screams. Uh, so these fucks have nothing to eat at that point. I don't think their morality comes from uh, a problem with killing. I think it comes with a problem with killing something that has eyes. I think they just feel guilty, and they don't have that hunter instinct to handle the fact that your food might look at you before you chop its fucking head off. <laughs> so if the day ever comes where somebody says, yeah, trees feel, uh, plants feel, uh, grass feels, uh, they're they're, they're going to go self-extinct, or they'll shut the fuck up and start eating steak like the rest of us. Eat them from someone to them pay for us to consume. We have made animals our pay. They get the worst of us with no chance to escape. How can ending the suffering of trillions not be our priority? Speciesism and greed have blinded us. Surrounded by death, how can we find peace? And I bet you, uh, here's how ineffective these retards are. I bet you every single person that was lined up to get a hamburger still got a hamburger. I bet not one person decided to leave and go eat Brussels sprouts. I bet you every single one of those motherfuckers, this guy right here, he's filming it to show his wife these crazy people, but he's going to get a he's gonna get a Big Mac. Big old, uh, what, Big Mac Whopper, whatever the fuck it is. He's going to get a triple cheeseburger. Guzzle that down with a sugary soft drink. He didn't give a fuck. Oh, oh, look, the college kids are upset again. Uh, how many hamburgers do you want, honey? Um, I'm at McDonald's right now. What would you like me to bring home? There's also one... They're, I, they're just weird. They're weird on who they decide to protest at. Uh, there's one where it's... Uh, if you've ever been to New York, they have horse-drawn carriages. So you can pay like 20 bucks and it gallops around Central Park, wherever the fuck it is. And so people, tourists, will bring their kids, ride on the, the carriage for a while, whatever. Get a photo... Oh, you've got a little memory. But, like, they get all really pissy, and they start screaming at the kids. So, <laughs> let me see if I can find this. I just, uh, I just don't get it. I don't, I, I don't think you're, you're winning the war here. I don't think you're, you're winning hearts and minds. I think you're just annoying people. Because you come off as fucking retarded. Uh, no, please, please give me space. Okay, I'm, I'm looking for a specific video. One moment. Okay, I think it's this one. Where they're just they're just screaming at the guy for no reason. Oh, you're terrible. How could you? How could you? How could you own a uh, how could you own a horse? What are you doing? The horses, right? Yeah, yeah. So I holding on to them to the horses. Could you imagine your little kids are in a fucking carriage they're gonna go all around a little a little ride have a little bit of fun they're in the big city it's a it's a nice experience and you get these degenerates just start screaming shit talking about dead horses and liars exposed your five-year-old doesn't fucking know what the hell's going on <laughs> they're scaring they're gonna make the horse run out into traffic and get hit by a fucking taxi which you know speaking of speaking of uh, animal rights and <laughs> let me show you this clip I, I, you know, it doesn't really go into great detail, but I'm fairly certain this bitch is responsible for a bunch of chickens dying because of her protest. Uh, let me, let me, let me find this one. Okay, fantastic. Oh, I love it when they scream. It's always a good time when they scream. <laughs> Stop screaming, bitch. Let me get this queued up. All right, here we go. An unusual sight near Battleground Monday evening, an animal rights activist arrested for trying to steal a chicken, of all things. We had a home for it. We had a sanctuary that was going to let it live out, to, live out its life. To understand how we got here, let me take you back a few hours. It was just after 3 o'clock in the afternoon, near Highway 502 and 29th Avenue. 
A truck hauling up to 6,000 chickens to the Kelso area overturned, spilling the chickens onto the roadway and into a ditch. Here's that. Fantastic. Wait a way to knock it out of the park with your animal rights protest. <laughs> it's just fucking chicken truck crashes. And these loony bitches, <laughs> there's so many dead chickens. Those crates probably weigh like a ton. It's a giant metal box that fell on their little chicken heads. <laughs> Splattered on asphalt in a sunny day. It's probably hot as fuck. You might, it's KFC. Just grab some seasoning and dump it on them at this point. You're going to eat them right off the pavement. They're nice and cooked. You stupid bitch. <laughs> Fucking derails the chicken truck. Oh, we had a sanctuary for it. We had a sanctuary for this chicken. You don't understand. We were going to rescue it. Sure, 5,000 of them are dead. But this one chicken, this one chicken's going to live free. It's going to know freedom because of us. Don't you, don't you understand? We're, we're the heroes here. We're, we're the freedom fighters in this situation. Oh, my God. Oh, they're so retarded. Oh, nobody can like, You're not going to make them care. Walking into a restaurant, walking into a supermarket, derailing traffic. It's probably not going to be the battle of hearts and minds for you. You're not going to really win over a lot of sympathizers. Because they're going to be watching guys scrape up chicken guts from the highway for the next week. Try to get that smell out of the air because it's going to just hang there. Hang there like just a, a blanket of death. Everybody, roll up your window, honey. We're going past the chicken accident. But at least they rescued that one. You know, the one chicken they got to the to the fucking uh, sanctuary that our little liberal bitch was super happy about rescuing. <laughs> fucking retards. Oh, it's clown world. These people live in clown world. They just don't think through what they do. Uh, from down forward punch. Did you see that Soph got banned from YouTube? Who is Ralph going to cling on to now for clout? Um, yeah, from I, I, I don't really watch Soph's videos, but uh, from what I understand, they did like some LGBTQ video uh, that YouTube ended up taking down. And I think like an hour later, after they had removed the video for hate speech or whatever reason they gave, uh, her whole channel got purged. So now I think she's exclusively on BitChute for videos and I'm, I guess DLive for streaming. Unless she has, like, a, a backup YouTube channel she streams from. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but I did see people talking about it yesterday. Uh, that her channel got wiped out. Um, you know, her her troubles, they just kind of kept escalating. I mean, her channel got taken down. Then you had a reporter wanting to report on the school she went to. Or some weird shit like that. And now, uh, again, her videos get taken down. And finally, the channel just gets, gets wiped out. Uh, you know, I talked about this last week. YouTube is kind of positioning itself to implement new rules. That harassment on harassment guideline shit is going to be coming by the end of the year. Um, I know they tinkered with some monetization rules back on the 22nd. I mean, I think that's why you're seeing people like uh, Keemstar say that all his videos are not getting monetized anymore. Uh, people like The Quartering said that a third of, like, or two thirds of his videos got demonetized. Uh, you know, things are changing. Uh, who makes money is changing. Who can put up videos is changing. Who can say what they want to say is changing. Uh, you know, this goes back to my original point about the internet on its journey towards sanitization. On making it friendly for marketers. On making it a more corporate kind of entity. And you've got all these different groups that are kind of commingling to make that happen. Uh, from people with political biases and motivations that want to get rid of opinions they don't like to companies that want to be able to advertise in a friendlier environment uh, to useful idiots that talk about their talking points without thinking about how they'll be applied and so you, you're seeing that play itself out right now in real time I mean you're seeing that everywhere on Twitter on Facebook on YouTube uh, people are just getting uh, ripped away and it's kind of building up towards the next election uh, I mean fuck you can't even really restream uh, debates anymore they're, they're going to just copyright hit you because they can't control what your opinion is going to be. Even if you're a leftist, they don't know what you're going to say. So tough shit for you. That was never really an issue for the past fucking decade. But now it's suddenly an issue. Now 
now CNN and other organizations are going to treat it like it's NBC and the fucking Olympics. It's you know, dark days ahead. I'm not I'm not hopeful for what the future of the internet's going to look like. Uh, and we're kind of living through the motions of it right now. If people completely deplatform from everything, having to try to subsist and survive and create on their own website. Uh, you know, Alex Jones, I think, was built up enough uh, that he could survive it because he already had a pre-installed, you know, base that would follow him or, you know, stay contained on his own website. But you see a lot of these different content creators, uh, they go make their own page and it, it's really hard. I think, uh, didn't Mumkey, after he got banned, initially want to start his own, like, little website to put stuff up on? Uh, but then he used, like, an alternate account, Simi and Jimmy or whatever it was. Uh, I've seen a lot of people try to do that. It reminds me back in the day. Uh, this is back a long time ago, back when Blip TV was still competing with YouTube. Uh, the Amazing Atheist and a bunch of different um, creators that were kind of around him wanted to make their own version of YouTube. Because fuck YouTube, man. Uh, so they were going to create their own YouTube and everybody was going to upload and everybody was going to move over to it. Uh, because YouTube was implementing new policies they didn't like. Uh, the problem was, once they got over there, interest dwindled, nobody showed up, nobody was creating, and it just kind of died. I think that's what makes it amazing to me that BitChute has survived like it has. Uh, it's because people actually use it. And DLive, you know, I, I, I know they're they're playing the money hat game. DLive is trying to be like Epic, and where they, they offer a lot of money to people like PewDiePie to try to draw on the interest. I don't know how that's going to pan out. You know, if Twitch keeps being authoritarian with its streamers and YouTube starts to be more authoritarian with its rules on uploads and streaming, maybe people will use DLive. Or maybe BitChute will implement its live streaming thing it's been tinkering with in beta for like six months now. So it's hard to see which way that's going to break. I don't know. I feel vindicated. I've said it for, God, five years now that this is where we were going and here we are. And I don't have a lot of faith. I know people are talking about Trump and saying, oh, you know, he gets it. You see you see him and people around him tweet about Internet censorship. You, you see them tweet about what these corporations are doing. He's inviting people to the White House to do little speeches about censorship and freedom of speech. You've got to be smart about this. Trump is going to use that as an election tactic. That's why it's being talked about now. People were getting fucked with for the last four years. People were getting deplatformed for the last four years. People were getting censored for the last four years. He's talking about it now because there's a hope that that can be a big issue to drum up support. He doesn't. I don't think he really cares about it, nor do I think he's really interested in addressing it. If you want somebody that's actually going to go after these people, you should vote for fucking uh, Tulsi. She's suing Google. She personally is suing Google for fucking with her. So I, I, I don't know. I just, I don't have faith in Trump fixing this. I think you have about as much chance of him fixing it as you do of seeing that wall. It's just not going to happen. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, great. Wait, yeah, Friday turned out shitty, didn't it? We had, we had a nice start there, laughing at the politicians and stupid vegan protesters, and now we got to the, the dark part of the stream. We're talking about unhappy things, like the reality that we live in, where you can't really say anything anymore without just getting hit. 19 different ways. God, and they... It, it's such a clusterfuck. It's such a web. I mean, even Twitch streamers, like, they're implementing policies that extend beyond the website. You've got to be on best behavior everywhere now. If you're a Twitch streamer and you call somebody a nigger on Twitter, your Twitch is gone. They will ban you. If you go on YouTube and say something they don't like, you're, you're banned. You're gone. It's done. They're applying the... Uh, I, I guess the only other company right now that I can think of that's doing something similar would be Blizzard. Where if you if you are known to... Like, they implemented a thing. If you put up, like, a, a trolling video on YouTube of you playing a match and just fucking with people, you're banned. Even if nobody reported you. If nobody reported you, if everybody in that match thought it was funny and they didn't care, and Blizzard finds that video, you are banned, your account shut down. I don't understand why this is the next new thing of hunting people down from platform to platform to platform, looking for even the smallest crack in the facade of best behavior as a justification for removing them from everywhere. 
but that's the tactic they're employing. Uh, now, now you ruined my morning. Now you ruined my morning. Who asked that? <laughs> Who fucking asked that? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Down forward punch. Well, I, you, specific, you didn't really specifically ask that, but you got me on a tangent. From the Yufio answer, you were wrong uh, that Boulder Jarbo only has two channels. He created a third. Remember, he's an expert at algorithms. Check the view count, too. Oh. Well, breaking news, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, Matt Jarbo has a hot new third channel. I don't know, Chad. Are you interested? Uh, let me pull Chad. Should we go look at Matt Jarbo's brand new account to see what the Boulder King is up to today? What fresh content does he have for us? We had Three Buck Cinema. We had uh, uh, Jarbo's main account. I don't know what new thing he's doing. Oh, I see a lot of excitement. I see a lot of no's. Well, from one person, fuck you, we're watching it. I see a lot of yeses, too. Now, let me let me open this up, make sure... What, what do we got here? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Is this actually a... This, is this a real Matt account? There's no way. All right, let me... Let me <laughs> Dude, what are you doing? Oh my god, this might be the saddest shit I've ever seen. Holy fuck. Hey, what's going on? Oh my god, it really is Matt. Oh my god, this is really his fucking channel, isn't it? <laughs> oh, dude! Alright. Here's what Matt's been reduced to. Remember, we looked at his metrics last week, I think. Uh, you know, two million views a month, probably making around five to six grand off ad revenue. Uh, diminished, diminished, diminished uh, after his uh, flagging debacle as more of his uh, core subscribers left and the algorithm started to not favor him. So I guess Matt has decided to branch out and try new things with a brand new channel called Blu-ray Theater Therapy. Uh, let's see what Blu-ray Therapy, you know, let's see what that's all about. I got good feelings about uh, this format. All right, here we go. Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Blu-ray Therapy for the 30th of April, 2019. I'm here at my local Walmart later in the day because I wasn't able to get out early on, and I'm not able to get the Best Buy this week, but given the amount of releases that we have... See, I can already tell this is Matt Jarbo because he's walking with the fatty wobble. You know, it's not even that he doesn't have... <laughs> it's not even that he doesn't have a little mount or a, a selfie stick. You can... You can actually, through the camera wobble, tell when one leg goes down and the other does. It's got that distinct gyration of a large midsection. I, no one is really missing anything, trust me. First things first, I headed over to the entertainment section, walking past... First things first, where did you go, Fanny? Because I don't see the entertainment section. The first thing I see is candy. <laughs> it's a candy first section. First things first, I headed there over to the entertainment section, walking over past there. the badass Avengers Endgame stand-up from last week. But the movies are what I'm here for. So, of course... this Is this really the whole format? What in the fuck? He made, a, he made an entire channel to go to Walmart and read the back of DVDs. Chat, do you understand how broken Matt Jarbo is? If Keemstar saw this... If Keemstar saw this, I, I, he would never... He'd drive Matt to suicide with the jokes he'd be making. Matt Jarbo has reached the point in his career where he's filming himself reading DVD boxes at his local Walmart for content on YouTube. And look at the length. Remember, if they reach 10 minutes or around 10 minutes, that's the best uh, bet for ad revenue. Of course, they still have Dragon Ball Super Broly up there along with Dragged Across Concrete, the new Mel Gibson, Vince Vaughn gritty crime drama, which uh, didn't do very well review-wise, but not bad for 18 bucks or 15 on DVD. I, mean, I hear it's a pretty violent movie, something maybe worth checking out. Speaking of violent films, we have Miss Ball. This can't be the whole channel. I It just can't be the whole channel. This cannot be... How many of these has he made? What did that fucking ask me? Well, I, I think it said, has your YouTube channel been stolen? No, it hasn't. I'm actually watching this willingly. 188 subs. When was this channel made? Okay, this was made last year. This... <laughs> this wait a minute. Um, uh, uh, oh my god. He, uh, he made this right before the implosion. Blu-ray Therapy is a weekly series about new movies that hit store shelves, what the best deals are, and the oddities that are out there. Looks like he gave it an attempt 
Started doing videos three months ago. Stopped two months ago. Uh, what's the highest rated video? What's the award winner here? Uh, well, it looks like it's, I guess, Godzilla. <laughs> Maybe talk hey, and watch what's going these. on, everybody? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Blu-ray Therapy for the 28th of May, 2019. I'm so sorry I'm a couple days late in posting this. Unfortunately, I just wasn't able to get to it. But I did shoot this on... His little fatty wobble through the fucking parking lot's the best part. Just watch this. 28th of May, 2019. I'm so sorry I'm a couple days late in posting this. <laughs> this little wobble through the parking lot. Unfortunately, I just wasn't able to get to it. But I did shoot this on Tuesday. Sadly, it didn't really matter much this week, considering that nothing of value really came out. No big releases. In fact, the only thing we're going to find here at Target are a bunch of straight-to-DVD films. Or Oh, why are you making these videos, Matt? Even why are you doing this? It came out that no one went to go see, which is unfortunate. Greta, which I do believe was in theaters, but still didn't do much, even though Chloe Grace Moretz isn't as much of a name anymore. And look at this one. Alec Baldwin, Salma Hayek, Drunk Parents. Yeah, this is a straight-to-DVD film. Uh, I think I'll wait for Netflix, to be honest with you, on that front. And then they've got Isn't It Romantic, a movie that no one saw back in February. And the other Matt, you could make, okay, you could make this, you could make these videos just by going on to Target. And, this video, th this has no reason to exist. You could go on to Walmart and Target's websites where they list what they have and the prices that they ask for. <laughs> this, this is an archaic concept that y I don't understand what you're doing. Upside, another movie no one saw back in January. This is, this is the Target lineup. But we also have Outlander Season 4, I believe, the special edition, if you happen to be a fan of that show, for 45 bucks on Blu-ray, or the standard edition for only 30 bucks, which is not bad. But here, this is a good find. The 4K edition of Stranger Things Season 1. They've been, they've been, it's only 30 bucks. Yeah, it's a good find for you. <laughs> Nobody knows what target you're at. If that's like a unique, <laughs> this video doesn't, I feel like my brain is hurting right now. Chat, can somebody help me? What the fuck is the point of this? <laughs> What's fucking the biggest video on here? 714 views. Even they're split. 26 to 26. I, I feel so bad for him. I'm giving him a pity upvote. I just, I, I don't want to drive this guy to killing himself. Let's see what... Uh, check out this movie, The Ballad of Monday Matt. It's gold. I'm a soy-filled bitch. Monday Matt 2018. Thanks for pointing me here, Jim. Well, you're welcome. I'm in a dark place. I might flag this. Uh, sweet, I'm renting it tonight to prepare for IMAX Godzilla on Sunday. There's the one genuine person that watched this. Pepper Talk. Love these videos. I just completed my MCU Blu-ray collection last Monday. Matt, why are you doing this? Funko Pop, not Pop Funko. What the fuck? Wow, yeah, they're just chomping at the bit for more of this content. I, I want to see older comments. Let's go look at the older comments on these amazing videos. Where's the first one? Hey, everyone. <laughs> it's a little fatty wobble. Fred Meyer. Let's go to Fred Meyer. My little fatty wobble. So go through the part. One comment. Is this an official channel from Matt Jarbo? No. No, people have stolen this. This is the high quality content you find on his main channel. This is a, a re-upload. Somebody's trying to get that sweet, sweet ad revenue for Matt without letting him get a piece of the pie. Wow. I just, uh, you know what? Actually, since we're, I'm going to take a journey. Let's take a journey. I need to see what this motherfucker's doing on his main channel that would drive him to do this. All right, let's go look at Matt Jarbo. <laughs> oh, God, these search results. Okay. Let's go look at Matt Jarbo's channel to see what's what's going on. All right, here we are. All right, here's uh, here's Matt's channel, 134,000 subs. Uh, you can see the view count not looking not looking too good. Uh, 2K, 1K, 1.8K, 1.5, 3.1. Is there anything that's breached 10,000? I'm looking back a month, and no, there isn't. No video he's put up in the last month has gotten above. It looks like 6,000 views on his 134,000 subscriber channel. Uh, let's, I, I don't, I don't even know what fucking video to look at. Logan Paul admits he's broke and has pink eye. 
Um, okay, okay, Keemstar. <laughs> I see what you're trying to do here. You know, usually he makes a video when it's interesting. I guess Matt's going to take the shit nobody cares about. I mean, I like to think he's a person. He's definitely a human. He, he's definitely of the male variety. But is he a person? I mean, that's up for a lot of people's <laughs> discussion and determination. Uh, because we don't know. We, we really don't know. But he's definitely famous and he's definitely... Okay. Has, I think Matt's gotten a little bigger. So I think my fatty wobble theory in the parking lots is pretty on the money. Also, he looks terrible in this. It looks like he's been sleeping <laughs> sleeping outside in the doghouse. Hair disheveled. <laughs> this entire look, I don't know what's going on with him. Making headlines again, because it says here, the internet is deeply confused by YouTube star Logan Paul's bizarre Fox Business interview. And if you saw that interview, you, you're really going to ask yourself, what, what, what is this? Again, okay. I just came to his channel, so you can't say that these are from me or from people watching the stream. Like, this shit's already established, all right? <laughs> so let's see what the comments say. Yeah, all the comments were a week ago. Oh, that, that is fucking harsh. Still, it's been a year, and he can't get a positive video response. Let's see if anybody's, uh, anybody, what are they, uh, are they finally starting to talk about what he's talking about? Nobody's making the uh, boulder jokes anymore? Yeah, okay, great, awesome. <laughs> He's got 30 comments. So of the 100 people that click this for pity's sake, only 30 of them could be bothered to leave a comment on it. Oh, maybe that's why. Maybe reality's hitting him. That's the face of reality staring back at you. That's why this man is reviewing fucking DVDs at Walmart for a living. <laughs> He's going to Fred Meyer to film the back of fucking Blu-ray boxes to make 10-minute videos. Oh, that is fucking brutal, man. Oh, I feel... I almost feel bad for him at this point. That is some... That's, uh... <laughs> that's some dark shit. I don't know where he goes from here. What, what awesome new thing could Matt do after the DVD shit? Are we gonna visit bookstores? Matt, are you gonna go to Barnes & Noble and read the backs of books? You're going to give us the about uh, page on the author, maybe? Uh, you could make it a Barnes & Noble exclusive series. Maybe get some uh, ad revenue from them, you know? Like an advertiser deal. Like, hey, maybe you don't know who I am. I'm Matt Jarbo, famous for doing those Blu-ray DVD reviews at Walmart. I've come to your Barnes & Noble uh, to film your books. Because people love the backs of books, Barnes & Noble. You don't understand. You can pay me. You can pay me in Frappuccinos from the Starbucks you, most of your locations have uh, built next to them. Just, I need to eat. I haven't eaten in a while. I'm, I'm desperate, Barnes & Noble, please. Please. I'll review your board games. Your Funko Pop, Pop Funkos. Just feed me. Feed me in Frappuccinos. <laughs> oh. Oh, Matt. Oh, Matt, 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 Matt. It's, it's, uh, whew. you're reaching the end, buddy. You're reaching the end. I think, uh, I think, <laughs> I think you might know this, my friend. Wow. Yeah, you know, some YouTubers, uh, they implode where it's just, uh, <laughs> it just, it's over, it's done with. And others just kind of peter out. And I, like, Matt's the first case, I think. Where it was both of them together. <laughs> where it was, they imploded, and they petered out. It's remarkable, really. <laughs> but he just won't let go of it, I guess. From HDR to you, watch some Jarbo the Hutt videos to lighten up the mood. This is one of my favorite. Yet, Jarbo the Hutt's still putting out content, shitting on Matt. I'm sure Matt fucking hates it. Uh, I think, I don't know if Dami Pesos is still doing This Week in Soy, or uh, his video series on... <laughs> on Matt uh, but like, yeah, Matt it's I don't know what to tell you it's time to it's time to pick up a trade it's time to maybe invest in altcoins it's time to do something different if you're at the point where you're filming yourself reading DVDs at Walmart it's it's over it's just over it's time to just admit that it's over
You know, I've, I've said consistently, uh, once you start making money doing this, you get maybe three or four years and then it's done. It really is. It's it's over. It's finished. You know, the, the, the ones that do really well, I mean, you've always got the millionaires, the PewDiePies and the ninjas and shit. Those are an exception, obviously. For most people, three or four years, Matt, and you're, you're at like year four or five. And you're just, you're reading DVDs at a Walmart. I would, uh, <laughs> I would just hang up your hat, buddy. Oh, my God. Well, you know what? That lightened up the mood, actually. Thank you for suggesting we go look at Matt's fucking Blu-ray videos. <laughs> nothing, nothing makes you feel better than watching Matt Jarble fumble around uh, the end of his career. Oh, I know. It's cruel to say it, but it's the truth. <laughs> Matt, just call it a day, buddy. Just, I don't know how you bounce back from that. I think it's, I, I think it's just done. Uh, well, next week, we've got a bunch of shit lined up. We'll finish up the Gale stuff. I have that set up and ready to go. I have the Sovereign Citizen stuff ready to go. I've got some great news stories, uh, as well as fucking amazing videos from YouTube and a few from Live Leak about Sovereigns uh, losing their shit. So that's always entertaining. Uh, a couple other things I, I don't want to talk about just yet, but next week's looking good. Uh, a little more happy. We won't be talking about politics unless one of these idiots does something ridiculous. And we won't be uh, talking about Matt reading, DV <laughs> reading DVDs at Walmart anymore. That's just going to make us all so sad. I think uh, I'm going to spend the rest of my day playing Warhammer Inquisitor Martyr. Actually, really enjoy it. It's the first Warhammer game I've played that didn't turn out to be shitty. I'm amazed. And it's got so many problems, but it's fun. I hope you all have a, uh, a good weekend. I hope you have a good Friday and a good Saturday and a good Sunday. Uh, again, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, 9 p.m. Or, <laughs> Jesus, 9 a.m. Eastern. And, uh, yeah. Uh, so far, so good. I mean, this is about, this has been about a month now. I've been doing the streams on DLive. Haven't really had any issues. I know some people have some playback issues. There's some issues with their app. I, I think they're addressing them. I, I don't know. I don't have a, a line into these people. Uh, but for the most part, they've left us alone. The Lemon Emperor has decided that we can sit in our little area with the X tag on and just laugh at shit and be left alone, which I like. That's the way I want it. 